What's up? This is Bam Margera, and you're watching the Awkward Side Hug. <laughs> Brian was a little subconscious there. Yeah, my, I don't know why. It was weird. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the Awkward Side Hug. Uh, we're a podcast and a platform for the Awkward Side Hug generation. If you're wondering if you're part of that generation, just continue watching and see if you are. But if you're watching, you probably are, to be honest. If, yeah. You definitely like, are. Most like, imagine you I watch mean, the whole episode, you're like, I will, I'm not part of the Awkward Side Hug. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like a 70 year old. So, He's part so, of the Awkward Side Hug generation. Uh, try, I'm trying not to do this without this falling all over myself. Like, am I. Jesse. You're using like a G.I. Joe? Did <laughs> no, you break it? No, it just oh. right there. Brian had all pre all pre show to do that and he waits till we go live to Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was gonna be a lot cleaner, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a my well, that's my fault. I know that that's gonna drive Steven nuts. I apologize. Mm-hmm. I'm I I i am really craving that stone cold beer now. Like it's in my fridge right here and like in preparation for this episode, I was like, damn, I, I really want to drink it on air too. But I also got super drunk off one beer. So Yeah, well Fuck you got three you got three beers left in there, so you know you do you, you, you know who do sound, all three. You know who sounded super drunk? <laughs> all three of them. <laughs> what happened? You know who sounded super drunk today? Who? <laughs> uh our boy Kanye. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. So Kanye West. Man, Man. so what Kanye. happened, Stephen? What what was uh what did Kanye do yeah. today? Okay, so I mean, I I love, I love the old Kanye. <laughs> um, I miss the old Kanye. I, from the- college Dropout, in my opinion, is still the best hip hop album of all time. The I, first I, two I, albums are amazing. I loved Kanye up until I don't know until a few years ago when he just started going crazy. I, like he, I think he really has mental health issues mm-hmm. that he has never fixed. Um, so he threw a presidential rally today. So, um. For you out there that don't know, he, he is going to be on the ballot, I think, in some states. Um, so he, he held a – it was it North Dakota or South Dakota today? I think it's South Dakota. No, he drew South Carolina. Oh, that was South oh Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, Carolina. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm thinking Dakotas. Um, yeah, he threw it in. I don't, I don't think that would have gone down well. In the, in the <laughs> yeah. <Dakotas. laughs> well, even, even in the Carolinas. Anyways, he just had an array of topics. Um, he talked about Harriet Tubman not freeing slaves. Um, he talked about abortion and how he was almost aborted and how he um, almost how had, he did his own daughter. Right, he almost had his own daughter aborted. He started crying. I mean, he was just wilding out there and, and oh, speaking gibberish, <clears throat> gibberish and nonsense. It, it just let, let me ask watch it on YouTube. Yeah, is it was his rally more. Did it make more sense than a Trump rally? I've been to a Trump rally uh, when Trump ran in 2016. <laughs> wait, wait, let's put this in context. Yeah, pretty late. Yeah. And, and one thing I want to tell everybody is, like, this show isn't political, okay? So get off your high horse, take and a step back. Let me, not, let, me, let me explain myself before you start expert, judging. We're not experts either. In 2016, I went to a Bernie Sanders rally and I went to a Trump rally. I wanted to see the difference between the two. And yes, there is a huge difference between the two. Um, but yeah, I've been to, like I said, a Trump rally in Anaheim, of all places, right? Of course. And um, very interesting. It, it just, it was a lot of chanting, right? Uh, at that time, it was build the wall and lock her up. And um, it was very similar to like the uh, WWE live shows that we went to, you know, like in Bakersfield. <laughs> you know, because uh, just... all those WWE shows always have like they're trying to lock Hillary up in the, in the crowd. <laughs> right. So, lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. So, <laughs> so it was it was very interesting. Um, <laughs> you screwed Trump. You screwed Trump. <laughs> obviously, I was just sitting there, um, sitting there and taking it all in. It was just very, a very eye opening experience, but. Um, the Kanye West thing did not, it was nowhere near a, a Trump rally. Uh, it was basically um, a narcissistic person in the front of the room just trying to preach his beliefs or his his story. It's always about him, 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 him. And uh, I, I just, I don't know, It's I think it's a waste of time for, for him and so it's a waste of time for us. Do, do you feel like 
between now and November that he'll at least create enough uh, momentum where he'll affect the election in any way? Possibly. Like, a vote for him is a vote for Trump. I I know how some people might be confused by that, but, like, uh, most likely, like, not to sound too, not to make this a political show, but, like, you know, Republicans have their loyal voters, and then the re- and then Democrats have to kind of work a little harder to get people to show up to the polls. So people show up to the polls are most likely to vote Democrat. If yeah, so uh, I, no, so I, 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 don't, I don't think, to be honest, I don't think Trump rallies are the most intelligent, you know, speeches ever either. But Kanye West, to me, like from from all of the clips that I've seen, <laughs> was it was more like the crowd went to sort of be entertained and laugh at him almost so there was there were moments where um where he was almost the inside joke standing on stage and the crowd like they, they would cheer at just some of the ridiculous things he would say just because it was ridiculous and he would be like oh no nobody talk and then, then like the, you could kind of hear people like like giggling in the crowd every time he did mm-hmm. that because he did that multiple times so like mm-hmm. for me it just seemed like yeah i agree it's just like it was he, a circus yeah he hasn't gotten like the the help that he that he's needed over these years and yeah they they just went to go see a circus it almost seems like and then i also agree with brian seeing uh, uh, as trump's supporters no matter what they know who they're voting for right at the end of the year whereas uh a lot of people are, are torn on biden and like the democratic uh side this year so with kanye going out there there's going to be a lot of people who think they're funny voting for Kanye, but all of Trump's supporters will vote for him. So it, it's very important. Even if, you know, whether, whether you're left or right, it's very important not to vote for Kanye this year. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's our stance. Like, we, yeah, it's yeah. important to vote, but make sure it's not for Kanye. Just make sure it's not Kanye. <laughs> like, yeah. Go back to making, like, college <laughs> dropout part two or something. Uh, unless you're right. doing that, I don't really care what Kanye is doing. I think, uh, this is a hot take, but I think I think Kanye's done. He's past his, his, his Like, prime. musical? Yeah, he, he's mm-hmm. done with music. He's, I don't know, I, I like, his last album, what, what was it? Um, was it the one it. with Kid Cudi? My, oh, yeah. So I actually okay, liked but... one song on there, and I liked Kid Cudi's part on there, but, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you... Hell, I can't even think of the name, so this is like not even doing well for Kanye right now either. Is so after so I liked Kanye's first three albums roughly, mm-hmm. and I even liked 808 and Heartbreaks, and that's his fourth mm-hmm. album. After that, I haven't really liked anything until that one song, uh, with uh, Chance the Rapper came out. Ultra Light Beams. Ultra Light Beams, and and, and he doesn't even rap on that, mm-hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, I'll tell you right now, Kanye is to this day still one of the top five or ten producers in the game, in my opinion. But he has not made a single rap album that I thought was relevant. And if he, if it's because he needs ghostwriters, go hire more ghostwriters. Like I don't know what the thing. I know we're going on to a different thing right now than his rallies, but I might as well get this out because I think we've been asked this before on the podcast. <laughs> but like, yeah. At the end of the day, Kanye is not a top ten candidate for the presidency. Yeah, he's gotta he's gotta get help for sure. Okay. Not Biden or Trump. Name some somebody else who you'd vote for before you'd vote for Kanye. Oh, like like a celebrity or just random people? Yeah. Oh, The Rock for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. The Rock. yeah. I want to. If I've seen pictures of The Rock with mankind as his uh, <laughs> as his ready mate, yeah. obviously that wouldn't happen. But I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, Dwayne. So, the Rock <laughs> side oh, <hug>. Dwayne. <laughs> 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 like we're on a first name basis. Yeah, oh, Dwayne. <laughs> Silly Dwayne. Uh, we'll vote boy. Boy. <laughs> Mor- moral, moral of the story is get out there, vote. Don't vote for Kanye. And educate yeah. yourself, please. Yeah, yeah, do your All right, educate yourself. Research both sides at the end of the day too, like cuz mm. th- there's way there's going to be way too many voters at the end of the year. Um, just watching their biased news and both sides are biased, but they're going to be watching their biased news. And, you know, th- there's a lot of uneducated people out there who are repeating their side's points just because their friend uh, had a five minute conversation with them. Oh, don't believe this, this or that. Believe this, this or that. And a lot of people are being sheep, but by doing that, so do your own research, research both sides, 
and then go with what is here, basically. And what's here is Dwayne Johnson. What's here is Dwayne Johnson. 2020. The Rock. Your mana is right here, huh? The Rock yeah. slash Mankind. Yeah. Your, your, your mana. <laughs> my, my, my mana. <laughs> my Terra Mana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, oh. Uh, yeah. So, so what else we got? We're, we're leaving the world, right? The real world, and we're entering this. The bubble. The bubble. Yeah. The bubble world. <laughs> Did you guys see that they're building a barbershop there? Yeah. Yes. That's yes. so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> People were saying that it's starting to look dangerously close to uh, how the neighborhood looks like in, in the 2K game. Sorry, I just mm. clicked my mic. Um, but yeah, dude, it's, it's looking like a fun fun little thing. The food, there's a lot to talk about. What, what do you guys want to talk about as far as the bubble? Everyone, the everyone's Instagram, like the player's Instagram. Like yeah. uh, My favorite thing is uh, Bobin and Tobias Harris uh, seeing each other from the... <laughs> oh, like from the balcony? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the NBA snitch hotline. That's that's. Oh, that's probably one of my favorite things, dude. From the, from the bubble. So so explain what what the NBA snitch hotline is, Brian. So basically, if and it doesn't even have to be on the same team or a different team, but if you see someone not following protocol, like not wearing their mask or getting mm-hmm. DoorDash when they're not supposed to, or leaving a quarantine that is that's been. Uh-huh. You're allowed to snitch on them, and then they get either fined or they have to continue the quarantine longer. There's a lot of, yeah. and a lot of players are now making fun of like that they're gonna snitch. Like Doc Rivers says he wants to snitch on LeBron. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like he's he's uh, all like, we we want to be with the only team at the end of the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just snitch everybody off. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you guys feel about the snitch online? Do you feel like it's gonna be used for good or bad? I think it had good intentions at the start, but. I think even they realize everyone in the bubble that it's quickly become a joke. <laughs> but I was I was gonna say I don't think it'll be used for its intention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think I think the NBA is a very tight knit um, mm-hmm. community. I think they're fr- a lot of them like, are friends too. Yeah, they're all friends, and mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot less NBA players than there are NFL players or MLB players. So I mean, I think you know they're having a good time. What did you guys think of uh, co- their, them comparing the food to, like, Firefest? <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, oh, yeah. So it's almost like, dude, I'm going to lose 50 pounds by the end of the, the bubble. <laughs> well, that's why, like, uh, I forgot who the player was. There was a player on the Nets. He got DoorDash and got in trouble for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to say it was Uber Jr. Or whatever. <laughs> See, I shouldn't have done my research. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, uh <clears throat> so we're, do you guys, we're amateur ap- experts do you guys feel the bubble is safe though i do the bubble should be safe yeah because it, it looks the, by the looks of it they're getting tested just as much as like the ufc fighters get tested what, like what's the during point of having a bubble if it's not safe mm-hmm. so dwight howard <laughs> uh he's wondering why he should wear a mask if it's supposedly <laughs> the safest place and as far as I remember, at the beginning, maybe it's not the same anymore, but there was workers who were able to leave the bubble and come back in the bubble, go home to their families, and then come to work in the bubble. That might not be the case anymore. Maybe someone's going to fact check me on that, but I believe that was the case. So if that's the case, then the bubble isn't the safest place. It's just mm-hmm. safer. Dwight Howard should still wear his mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I, at the end of the day, I disagree the UFC... with you. <laughs> what? I, I, because if it's the safest place, then why does he have to wear his mask? You know, so let me put this in perspective because I, I remember I read this on a tweet or whatever. It is you could either look like a fool for wearing your mask, or it could keep you safe. Whichever one, it's not a big deal. It's just a bunch of cloth. It's just a cloth on your face. When he's in his hotel room, he doesn't need to wear the mask. But when you go walk around, wear the mask. Well, what's it's a big deal. It, 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 I guess it depends, like you said, if, if there are people who are leaving the bubble. But if nobody's leaving the bubble and everybody's tested negative, why would you have to walk around with a mask? It would be its own bubble, a safe bubble, right? Or so it is. But if, there's a, if there's a leak in the bubble and then Dwight's not wearing his mask and then he gets sick. But... That's what I was thinking because players were already trying to sneak uh, girls in. Like the, the DoorDash, what if that happens again? You know what I mean? Stuff so like we, that, so. I, I, I think that there's a misconception of calling it a bubble because if it's a bubble, then nobody would be able to come in or out. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, it's not a bubble. It's more it's, like it's, a, it's, it's the NBA's play on words 
basically yeah. of hey we have a bubble you know and this is going to keep the players safe when in reality you're letting workers leave you're letting them come back people are sneaking door dash in people are sneaking girls in it's it's really then technically it's not safe at all it's basically you're just living in orange county or something you know like <laughs> yeah. no. do, you, do you want to defend your boy lex or you you think he should be wearing his mask <sighs> he's wilding yeah yeah he he should wear his mask <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, yeah i can't it, it's more of like a jar like if you were to catch like a bug uh and then you put it in a jar and then you try to put like little holes on top mm-hmm. to kind of keep it from dying or like Maybe I don't know, like a, a shoe box with a, like a little animal in it. You put holes so it could breathe. That's probably what the bubble's more like. Yeah, a little closer to that. Because yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, it's a hypothetical bubble. Like Steven said, it's just yeah. a name. Even that is safer. The box with holes in it is safer than the bubble. Yeah, the, jar, the, bub- the, the jar with holes on it is safer than the bubble. Well, the bubble also, if we're thinking about bubbles in general, bubbles could pop. And I think like wearing your mask keeps it from popping. You know, like because if not when you're letting people leave and come back. It's not, you know, it's already been popped. There's this false narrative of the bubble. Yeah. What I'm saying, like, you can't really call it a bubble if people are leaving and coming back. So Either far, way, though, it's probably, go ahead. I was going to say, so far, though, I feel like it's kind of working. I think it's and, working. And uh, so far, Zion left, Matras Harrell left, the Clippers. I'm sure there's other players that left, but Matras Harrell comes up because I get updates on that. Uh, but like Zion leaving is the bigger one. You get updates anytime my uh, Harris does anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, when he puts his shoes on, I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah. You know? so you just tie his shoes. Like, All right, he good, he good. So basketball starts though in in a week. In yep. a week. Like, I was trying to see if the day would pop up. On so does baseball actually too? Baseball. But that's a, another. Yeah, yeah, another. Another topic for another day, but yeah, both of them start. Or later in the episode. Uh, yeah, later in the episode. Uh, but either way, it's uh, the bubbles is gonna make it real hard for the the players to shoot their shot, though. Even oh, though they're yeah. they're literally shooting shots. So, when is it appropriate when you find someone attractive to shoot your shot? What do you? It's, get? it's the the question of the day. For for uh, for Ash. Um, I'll go ahead and answer first. So when you like someone or whether you think someone's cute, you introduce yourself or just in general, when, when you, when you want to shoot your shot for me, I'm always like the, as soon as possible is just let it be known that you're interested in them. Uh, and I say that out of experience of being on the friend zone and for too many times, like as I was younger, because I feel like, the longer you just like are friendly with someone and really not letting your intentions be known, uh, the longer that person will be like, Oh, he's just a good friend. Right. So for me, it's like, you know, if, if like you meet them, you guys are clicking, uh, or if you even like get their number, um, I would let them know right away. Like that's, that's my answer is is the sooner, the better. Hey, I think you're attractive. I'm interested. Can you, give an you example, know. can you give an example of shooting your shot for the audience? That way they, they know what we're speaking <clears throat> of. Like so there's, a, there's, yeah, there's multiple levels, right? So like the just meeting someone level is just like, hey, I, I think you're cute. Is there any way I could get your number? I think that counts as shooting your shot. I think if you have like a classmate, right? So like, uh, I don't know. And if you, you muster up the courage and whether it's like days in or weeks in, finally being like, hey, I was wondering uh, if you wanted to hang out sometime. That, I guess, could be considered shooting your shot um or or if you have a friend who you've always liked and this one's tricky though because you could be in the friend zone at that point and that's why i always like vouch for as soon as possible but that's also another one if you have a friend and you just finally like hey i actually like you more than a friend that could be like shooting your shot so i always consider the shooting the shot thing and this is maybe going too detailed into the idea is like when you shoot your shot you either hit you either make it or you miss it right so yeah yeah. it's it's, i guess the shooting your shot is like when you finally shooting your shot (laughs) <laughs> when you shoot, sh- I'm getting shot at. Uh, <laughs> uh, when uh, when you're shooting your shot at, like when you're about to ask a girl out or you're trying to introduce yourself, it's a basically a make or miss moment, and that's where shooting your shot comes in. Mm-hmm. So, so like, basically, to you, shooting your shot is like asking them on a date, for instance. They're either gonna say yes because they know your intention, or they're gonna say no because they don't have the same intention. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then, and then basically. 
it's either like or letting them know that you hey i'm interested in you right you know, like, or hey i find you attractive basically it's you're shooting your shot and then their reactions based on if you made it or you missed it <clears throat> right what do you think steven well uh, as far so, as all of this as as a married father <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, he's about to back out right now I'm, uh, respectfully uh, pass. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna throw that i was uh on the on the prowl right uh-huh. before um but if you shoot your shot too early you come off as aggressive mm-hmm. and if you wait too long you get friend zoned so mm-hmm. i think with experience and not a lot of people get you know the first one that they try all the time but it takes practice but i mean if you develop the um people skill you'll you'll be able to know when the right time is to to shoot your shot you know and it's a tricky um, game and, and to be honest that tricky. might be the best answer but that's still a very tricky game because now you're moving closer to friend zone and farther away from not being assertive enough i, I, won't, I won't say aggressive uh by going right away because like, yeah like you said by going right away you could be aggressive but but you are right if you meet somebody right and you just meet them that night or you meet them whenever right Mm-hmm. You, you need to shoot your shot right away to get their number that's correct because if you lose contact i mean today you have instagram you have all that mm-hmm. other um, social media but you're media. saying if it's more of like a reoccurring thing like whether it's a classmate or right. um i don't know like a volunteer thing and you just think someone's cute and you guys volunteer every like saturday or that, some random thing i don't know um mm-hmm. and there's maybe no those ra- types of situations sorry but there's like there's no right or okay. wrong answer and yeah, yeah. like and what's yeah. your answer, Brian? I don't, I don't know if you... There, well, there's to... a wrong answer, Brian. Uh, never <laughs> shooting your shot is a wrong answer. That's true. Uh, but uh... Oh, yeah, that could, that's, that's a painful alternative, too, because so you're if... living with that. You never know. And the, because throwing, throwing if the ball you... out of bounds? Or... <laughs> exactly, basically, yeah, because if you get to the point where you just never shoot your shot, you're kind of accepting the fact that you're going to be in the friend zone or that you're already in the friend zone. Right. Uh <clears throat> I'll, I'll just throw a twix on this, maybe like how I did to the ghosting thing last. <laughs> last you throw your twix on it. <laughs> <laughs> I throw the <a> right <laughs> twix. Uh, is uh, I always felt like do enough research for your not like necessarily research, but do enough mm-hmm. for yourself to know that you want to shoot the shot. And mm-hmm. like, so for example, because what if you make the basket and you realize you're now in a situation that you can't, it's difficult to get out of. Because you you now with a toxic you're dealing with a toxic person, because uh, I've done situ- I've been in situations where I've shot my shot, made it, and then regretted it immediately after. Brian can slap right now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, I like that. No, shot yeah, I think I've been yeah I've been in those situations too. Um, it's crazy though because like at that point you you just gotta like establish that you're like it, like if you shoot your shot you make it then you're just in the dating phase though but i see what you're saying though yeah like uh, i'm i like to think of myself as naturally a, a nice guy uh i'm typically shy or um but yeah nice in general and yeah sometimes yeah like if, if you shoot your shot make it and you're dating and then you're too nice to be like oh like i you know like that, that's dangerous thing. That, that's dangerous thing too and then you start going into the ghost team. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> right? And that's what I was about to say, because that's a dangerous thing, too, because uh, if you're too nice to be like, oh, you know, like, uh, maybe we should just stay friends or, or, or any other alternative of like, oh, I don't know if this is working. You know, that's that's what sh- you should say. But if you're too nice, you could end up hurting that person, you know, like pretty bad, um, you're hurting their feelings and like or whatever. And. So that's also a, a horrible thing that could happen mm-hmm. from that, but sometimes people, <laughs> Steve, 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 you hurt someone's feelings, huh? Well, what happened? Sometimes people I, said, sh- I know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, yeah, yeah. My my feelings have been hurt plenty of times. Right. Um, it's, it's a by, part of by, the game. It's a part. Dating, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's 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 a jungle out there. And, well, you yeah, don't you know, cry, so I, it makes sense. <laughs> that's hilarious. But yeah, I mean, I, I've I've it's I've gotten like internally angry at. Mm-hmm like examples or one example when someone was straight up honest with me like hey yeah i talked to my ex they said they were gonna change and you know i'm sorry but i just wanted to tell you and i was like uh you know like okay that's cool but you know peace out and so yeah i was mad but then i was like you know what i kind of respected that because then it didn't waste my time um but i mean it still hurts (laughs) it's just it's it's an initial it's a tricky situation yeah yeah it's an initial pain but Mm -hmm. eventually you know it goes away pretty quick yeah moral of the story 
you know, don't be afraid to shoot your shot. Mm -hmm. Be honest, right? Don't waste people's time, especially in today's day and age. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I do feel though that social media has kind of ruined that first part of dating that first, uh, the first couple of like interactions with the person like meeting people yeah because person, um okay. you, know, well, you, before... sound, you sound like a boomer so <laughs> well i have a kid and i'm married so yeah i'm a little bit of a boomer, so. i'm sorry i'm sorry that i sound like a metro boomer. boomer on the track all i'm saying is that like like and i have friends who have used the dating sites you know the bumbles <laughs> the the tinders and it just it seems like there's no like interaction like real like i want to get to know who you are as a person or um i want to know something about you it's more like how do i get into your pants basically you know and so, well that's a hard and that's like a different like subject altogether too because that's just like a, a difficult like from my personal experience i think that's like a difficult world i think the stigma is done by now i think years ago it was already like shattered of like oh online dating that's not a legit way of dating right I think that's been shattered, but I think, again, personally, I think that's like a hard world to win at for me because, um, cause like, like Steven said, it takes out the, the meeting uh, in-person factor. And I, I feel like that's probably where I thrive most is through my personality because this face doesn't do it on, on social media, but, um, right. but <laughs> <laughs> he said, <"Run." laughs> dang, Steven, so, not, not, not that you're, not that you're ugly, but like, there's no way to display your personality through a text. Yeah. And well, I would say it's my advantage. DM, you know? Well, like, let yeah. me, let me. Cause I, I'm right there with you. I had to be the funny guy. I have to be the personality mm -hmm. guy. Like, like I wouldn't be where I am today if I had to freaking DM somebody like, yeah. And then before oh. Brian uh, gets his, his point uh, on, on the other side though, it also, it's also a great way to like, kind of cut the, the middleman of, of, um, <laughs> Of, a of like busy schedules sometimes, you know, or like, or, or like, off, like awkward schedules that never would have met to begin with. But so ahead, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, awkward not, schedules. Uh, well, but, awkward schedule would be a good one. Uh, like, but go ahead. Sorry. sorry. Uh, it also kind of allows you to like cancel the bullshit stuff too. Like, so like there was a phase before I met my significant other on bubble. Um, I would set up dates and then cancel them because I'd rather play video games with you guys. Hey, 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 careful. You're going to slap to get them. <laughs> you know, and it's... That's hilarious though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, you know what? It's just not worth it. Based on what I know already, it's just not yeah. worth it. Now, yeah. so like I've been able to kind of like patiently wait till there was somebody that was worth it. It's easier to filter and like some of the earlier problems that we were talking about, like what if you shoot your shot and make it? It's like, oh, now we're kind of like awkwardly dating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's easier to filter yeah your 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 time that way uh like you said yeah i agree with you and then um just to kind of go on the other side though i feel like those experiences are what like they give you that knowledge you know like of how to have a certain type of relationship or to know what you're looking for or not looking for in a person i get that so it, but... it kind of helps you grow as a person and so you know like oh i don't really want somebody that you know is this way or is into this or, or you know, things like that well for the most part too you like it's not that it's like when you find someone on dating app they're always on the dating app like you do have to go meet the person unless you want to play video games with your friends yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. hilarious dude it's funny though because like the the biggest problem that i had with dating apps was um trying to be funny via texting words mm. right i'm like uh i like like i'm more funny in person whereas in texting i'm like i have like i i, I just don't know how to do it basically um I, my, my biggest problem was yeah basically getting the from texting to like hey let's uh let's go on like a a little like meeting date or whatever like at a coffee, coffee shop or whatever but, a costume um, shop <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, imagine you leave hey you want to go to the costume <laughs> You're gonna hit a, I'm just uh, dressed like the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish, I wish we could put the picture of you as the Hulk right there on the front. Dude. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to uh, see me when I'm lonely. <laughs> so, uh, so we're—if you noticed in our last episode, we had the reviewing beer segment, and now we're kind of. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't even remember the name? Oh. <laughs> it's a reviewing beer segment. We're, we're just phoning it in at this point. What did we call it again? Uh, uh, it's Ash Tasting. Ash Tasting. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Sue. Yes. 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 So, Which we are, we, we are going to bring back every, every, you know, every so often. We're trying to do different segments here for you guys. Yeah. So this is going to be a different segment. So we're going to... Some episodes we're gonna do like a what we're gonna do today, like a lightning round thing where we're gonna discuss like small. We're gonna discuss three topics again, but mm-hmm. in a smaller it dose. Man. I'm gonna be rapid lightning round, but yeah. we need your guys' help. The fourth mic. We don't have. And what, what do we need them? Yes. So. <laughs> we're just like, like rolling over each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm right. trying to have you, I'm, this is like the wrestling equivalent that I try to get reach for the tag, but you guys yeah. left and then one walking back to the oh, man, room. Yeah. Right now we're in a rest hole like trying to talk to each other, like no, we do this and then this. So, so this so this is gonna be a lightning round segment that we're gonna do at the end of some of our shows and we need a name for it. So we would like our fourth mic, our our fans, to help us come up with a name. Let's start off with the first one, guys. The Toronto the the Toronto Blue Jays are not going to be able to play baseball. They start their season in about a week. They're not going to be able to play baseball in Canada, and they're going to have to find an American site to play baseball. Florida and Buffalo are the two leading places that they're going to do this. How crazy is it that the, the Canadian, the Toronto Blue Jays, are not going to be able to play baseball in Toronto this season? I don't think it's crazy at all. I just, I just think it's basically Canada being like, hey, Americans are wilding right now. They can't get this COVID thing under control because they think it's political for some reason, whereas the rest of the world handled it correctly, and now we get to go play for the summer, right? Mm-hmm. Americans are crazy. But um, I probably shouldn't say that. But, um, no, we are. More. Very high. But, so I think it's the right move on Canada's part because they're trying to uh, be like, hey, until you guys get the COVID thing that you can't figure out under control, we'll let you back in. But until then you know, we're, we're keeping you guys out um, because that'd be way too many like back and forth trips between America and Canada. Saying, so yeah, saying, I think it's a smart move on their part. I agree with Lex. Uh, it doesn't make sense to bring um, other teams, especially in states like Florida and in California, Texas, right. to bring those players over. And then you don't bring just the players. Obviously there's, you know, certain positions, you know, ball boys or whatever. Yeah, or the the <clears throat> trainers and things like that. Who knows who's carrying what? And then you're yeah. gonna get the whole spread over there again. And I I think it's dope that they're gonna be playing like in a triple A park, uh, <laughs> cool. or or like a a summer league park or something like that. I'm not it's gonna be that. another interesting story. Yeah, like so, a, so Buffalo or Florida. I would say Buffalo. That's where the triple A team is, and it's closer Buffalo. to Toronto. Just in case, maybe by like September there is maybe fans from Toronto who can maybe come over and watch games if, if they ever get to that point I doubt it but but I'd say that would be the you don't know if people from Toronto want to come over to Buffalo <laughs> <laughs> well I was to say I don't think fans are gonna be able to come but like who no, says no. like yeah. for whatever reason Jesus comes back knocks COVID out, <laughs> out of the state, <laughs> you know, have people hang out again you never Dang. know all righty so then the next one I think Stephen has the next uh quote-unquote lightning round topic so uh is the word karen really as bad as people are saying it is no (laughs) no i don't think so is is getting called a karen disrespectful basically disrespectful okay so no i think it's hilarious i actually to be honest i just think it's going to be an internet fad or trend that's happening right now like in the memes and stuff like that and i love it I, i i think it's more hilarious um the people who get offended by it guess what their Karens. You know what? I think, I think, uh, I'm not saying all Karens are white, but most of them are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hot, Brian's hot take? Uh, Karens, uh, white people have this, uh, have identity issues and they try to hold on to things like uh, Christianity and other things like NASCAR and Confederate flags. And I, and I think uh, they're trying to hold on to something to victimize themselves when really it's not a big deal. All we're saying is you mm-hmm. complain at, at the restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or in parks yeah. right? all, all uh, we're saying is put put your damn mask on like come on <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if kane can do it for like an hour in a royal rumble you can too so right absolutely right? definitely and yeah. then uh, i believe i have the last lightning round topic of tiktok 
Uh, so I guess it already got banned somewhere, or it's about to be banned in banned like, India or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, and rumor has it, uh, rumor has it, um, <laughs> we get flagged. We can't make money off of this episode now. <laughs> um, <I'm just> <laughs> um, well, the U.S., the United States, uh, is possibly going to ban uh, TikTok now. So what what are you guys' thoughts on on that? Well, there's a, there's a company in the United States that's banning people from having TikTok on their company phones because of security issues. Oh, Amazon. Is it Amazon? Mm-hmm. Amazon so, is, is doing that. So, wow. yes, TikTok is, I don't know, I'm not going to go as far as say it's like spyware, but... Uh, Vine was better than TikTok. Just I throwing agree. that out there. Yeah. Vine actually had funny, interesting videos. TikToks are just, I don't know what they are. I know, here's my boomer coming out again <laughs> you know tiktok and i didn't know this until recently started out as an app called musically and i remember a select few people that i, I follow uh would always post their musicallys and it was just like lip syncing um things and like and when, when you do like a musically like it's like you doing like oh like i'm a savage and it's and like it's like really quick edits when when they upload it because it's like a weird uh speed up thing or like uh it's supposed to edit your your just video effects right yeah it was an effects thing yeah I and remember, that's all it was i remember computer. seeing that on snapchat like when you yeah. like on snapchat thing i don't have snapchat anymore so I don't if know you're if you're over 25 just start a podcast don't don't do tiktok <laughs> i know right <laughs> it's like you're Please. you're either young and on tiktok or you're old and you started a podcast and i think we've made our position clear we were and, this um, close. We were this close to starting a TikTok, but Lex never set up the account. So exactly, yeah. Because uh, it's because right. I was twenty nine at the time. I was like, uh, do I go TikTok or podcast? And I just ended up going podcast. Lex so. tried to Lex tried to bust a twist in his room, and he busted his knee, and so he was like, I'm, I'm not <laughs> it was an injury. Yeah, he's, an exactly. injury. he's been, he hasn't shown us his dance yet, which I hope he does pretty soon. I've been rehearsing it since March. That's, That's when right. I opened up my TikTok account. So yeah, we'll see. But yeah, so that was uh, anything else to add? Oh, you just kicked your desk or something. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> like, uh, you see my laptop just like do a backflip. I don't have anything to add. Uh, don't vote for Kanye. Uh, wear your mask in a bubble and shoot mm-hmm. your shot. That's a- shoot your shot.